A thing I've been thinking about is how art is very much a resistance and transformation of fear. And every album I've made, I've learned to challenge a huge major fear in my life or several fears because I think that the opposite of fear is courage. Welcome to Awaken, a podcast from the Rubin Museum of Art in New York City. I'm Tanya Katenjian, executive producer of Awaken. Over this second season of Awaken, we have heard the reflections of some extraordinary people sharing their stories and ideas about the key mind states illustrated in the mandala. Pride, envy, anger, attachment, and ignorance. Throughout, we've been guided by singer and songwriter Ravina Aurora. And in this special episode, we're turning the mic onto our host, Ravina, to hear her own story of awakening. It's not a coincidence that we asked Ravina to host this second season. She grew up in a spiritual household and came to better understand herself as an artist while she was here at the Rubin many years ago. Later in this episode, we will hear that story. But let's start here, at the beginning. Ravina was born and raised in the U.S. But like many Americans, she's first generation. Her parents moved here from India. I grew up in a very traditionally Sikh household. But I think what made it really interesting was that my grandparents, my mom, were tapped into the their spirituality in a way that was very deep like they were meditating all the time my mom would describe these moments where she was praying where she felt like she was being guided through the universe like super super fast she would talk about events occurring before they happened and how she could see them uh seeing and feeling things through dreams. Um, My grandparents would practice Reiki on me. They believed in the power of the mind over everything. I think it came from a place of them experiencing a kind of rare thing for a Sikh person to go through. They went through the 1984 Sikh genocide, and obviously it affected thousands and thousands of people, but in the grand scope of being a Sikh person among hun- hundreds of millions. It's a more rare experience and even more rare to lose someone and to be displaced by it. So I think that because they went through that, that made their connection to spirituality even deeper and they, they had to tap into something larger. And even just, you know, prayer music wafting throughout the house in the morning and all that energy being generated all the time, that was a very powerful thing to experience as a kid. Ravina's first visit to the Rubin Museum, a museum dedicated to art from the Himalayas, became a deep inspiration for her music and creativity. The Rubin opened her up even more to what is possible for her creatively. And now, as a host, she's done the same for us. I visited the Rubin Museum, I think for the first time, in 2016 or 2017, I want to say. It was super powerful because I had never really seen a museum that was dedicated to Asian art and seeing that reflected back at me was so powerful and you had these sound installations up of I think it was temples in the Tibetan region and they were sampling wind sounds and just the atmosphere and we ended up buying the vinyl for it and it was Just like walking around, experiencing that installation, it was super powerful. And it was actually where the inspiration for one of the songs on Lucid was from, called Pedal, which is the closing track. Pedal. 
pedal is about the acceptance of death. I wanted to make a song that was about what it might feel like before you die. You know, people describe almost dying and the kind of chemicals that are released. I wanted to make a song that was about that. The song is kind of like this meditative chant, but the chords of it are inspired by something like a D'Angelo song. Like it's very R&B chords over this very meditative Indian Eastern inspired chat. So that was kind of the starting point also for the next album. I was so inspired by what I had seen at the Rubin, seeing all this Asian art around me, feeling like it was time to blend East and West together to pay homage to my culture in a way that I hadn't before and find its way through the music. So, yeah, it was it was super beautiful. It just opened up the whole realm of possibility going to that museum and being able to see it in such an accessible way. There's a kind of circular quality about the Rubin Museum and I remember going through a maze of colorful Buddhist art with... They're so intricate, those paintings. It's so beautiful. I had never really been exposed to something like that before. And just seeing how that had... That intricate and kind of uh, maximalist art had been inspired by spirit was so cool because that was something that I resonated with a lot as a person who leans towards maximalism, even though it feels like with spirituality, simplicity is often more valued in a sense. So that was really beautiful walking around that and then coming upon this dark seating area where I believe they had images projected of where they were sampling those sounds from and there's really comfortable seating on the floor and these headphones that you can put on and there weren't that many people in the museum it was it was just like perfect like it it felt like you could fully relax inside the museum and yeah i've never i've never really had that intimate of an experience inside a museum before at the rubin art and beliefs are seemingly inextricable. As we have explored in the last seven episodes, Awaken walks us through the Vairochana Mandala, a work of art that illustrates the path to enlightenment. It is the quintessential example of how art and spirituality come together. And that resonates deeply with Ravina. I think spirituality is the driving force in everything I do. Because I was introduced to this kind of more conscious and sweeter and more ethereal way of looking at life, I was immediately connected to music. But the thing that I didn't have growing up in a traditional Indian household was the ability to talk about issues, talk about feelings in this way that is very open and is healing (laughs) because things just get swept under the rug in Indian households most often. Uh, And I think that's a lot of immigrant households. So music was the way to be quietly resistant, like writing a song about how I felt about certain dynamics in the house or maybe even racism that we're experiencing as Sikh people. All this pain I would transform through the music. And I noticed that every time I was in touch with my voice and in touch with music, 
it would bring me to a very similar space that spirituality did. And I think that the most beautiful part about being a musician is that it's led me to such a open and free and like even more spiritual life because being connected to artistry means you you have to keep your vessel open you have to be able to tap into something larger than yourself and yeah this is kind of the central force and it's led me here and i'm super grateful season two of awaken is fundamentally about coming face to face with our seemingly darker sides, the emotions that we feel most challenged by. And the idea of the series of the mandala is that to really come to a place of peace within ourselves, we need to come face to face with our more challenging mind states. Some call it negative emotions, some call it kleshas, Ravina refers to it as shadow work. Shadow work is integral in being able to heal and being able to be the most open and hopefully enlightened version of yourself. And I think that in this lifetime, we come here to work on all of our different shadow sides and it's very hard to even get to a place in life where you could probably say that, yeah, I'm I'm fully a fifth dimensional being now, <laughs> um, and I have I have no worries on my plate. Like I, I think part of this dimension of being on Earth is that heaven and hell and everything in between exist here. So we're here to to feel all the emotions and and to work through them and and find our peace with them. And that was actually kind of the the ethos of even what my second album was about because I I think that I had an idea about healing before that it was about reaching this kind of nirvana peaceful like state, but through my second album, through the life experiences I was also having, I unlocked this realization that being human is is just being at peace with the constant flux of anger joy jealousy uh, excitement sexuality like we're, we're such full beings there's no reason to not live out and feel all those things the the peace comes in the acceptance that's there A thing I've been thinking about is how art is very much, I think, a, a resistance and transformation of fear. And every album I've made, I've learned to challenge a huge major fear in my life or several fears, because I think that the opposite of fear is, is courage and courage to like love and be open. The synchronicity between the title of this podcast series Awaken, and the name of Ravina's most recent album, Asha's Awakening, felt magical. My album is called Asha's Awakening, so when I found out that the name of this podcast was Awaken, I was very, very excited. What Awaken means is to be fully in the throes of life, and fully in the throes of uh, present in whatever emotions it's bringing to you. O- awaken means to be in flow. It means to be kind of radically joyful. I think that a lot of the systems we have in place are are meant to divide and, and keep people not feeling the full depths of life and joy that they can experience. So when you decide that you want to live a life that is saying no to all of that and and choosing a life that is that feels really meaningful to you and and like you are here to experience the fullness of whatever this fate or this life has to offer you I think that is radical joyfulness
radical joyfulness. Let's sit with that for a moment and imagine what it can feel like to have it, to share it. We invite you to think of all the ways we might be able to bring radical joyfulness to ourselves and everyone around us. It doesn't take too much, just an awareness of each other, a willingness to look at the harder aspects of ourselves, and an understanding that by doing that, we increase our ability to connect, celebrate, and honor one another. Ravina illustrates this so much in her words and music, and it was wonderful to have her as our host. This is a bonus episode of Awaken, offering deeper insight into our host, Ravina. Awaken is produced by the Rubin Museum of Art with Don Eshelman, Tenzin Gelek, Jamie Lawyer, Christina Watson, and Tim McHenry in collaboration with Sound Made Public, including Tanya Katenjian, Emma Vecchioni, Philip Wood, and Jeremiah Moore. Awaken Season 2 is part of the Rubin Museum's Mandala Lab, a multi-year initiative generously supported by 28 donors and sponsors. To hear all seven episodes, go to rubinmuseum.org slash podcast or wherever you get your podcasts. You can continue the conversation by following us on Instagram at Rubin Museum. And if you're enjoying this podcast, leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts and tell your friends about this conversation you just heard. Awaken is inspired by the Mandala Lab at the Rubin Museum, an immersive space for social, emotional, and ethical learning. Come explore the lab in New York City or in one of the installations that is traveling the world. Visit rubinmuseum.org to learn more about the museum and about the art, cultures, and ideas of Himalayan regions. We look forward to seeing you.